for subscribing my channel, liking my videos and sharing it to the world. You are adding a great value in bringing a change in the challenges the dyslexic people are undergoing. As I said, dyslexia is a hidden challenge. People don't know they are going through a challenge. People around them, their friends and relatives are also not aware of this problem. So if you as an individual can reach out these videos to many people, you are adding a lot of value to people's life and in return unconsciously receiving blessings. Let's continue with the four series of videos that I have been doing on clues to find out dyslexic adults and young adults. The other three videos mentioned about the speaking challenges and the reading challenges. Now this video also I mentioned about the other reading challenges that the young adults and dyslexics undergo. So if they are in college or if they are working in your office or if you are a professor of a student who suffering with dyslexia and you are not aware, these videos will help you how to find out. The basic basic problem with people with dyslexia is challenge to read. IQ average or normal as we call it. Thinking out of the box. Ideas amazing but when it comes to reading they struggle. So I've already finished 12 points on how to identify dyslexia in adults. This is my 13th one. A preference for books with figures, charts and graphs. If you give them, if you give them a book with lots of words pages full of sentences compared to a book which has images, charts and figures, they will automatically pick up that because they understand or comprehend charts and figures much faster than reading the book. The 14th, a preference for books with fewer words per page or with lots of white showing on the page. Too much of words? Book full of pages or a document full of words gives, gives them a big scare. Whereas a document with images, graphs, pictures, number lines makes them understand things much better. The 15th, disinclination to read for pleasure. Many companies encourage their employees to read and upgrade themselves. They love to upgrade, but they have a challenge to read. Fortunately, now there is text to speech, which helps a lot of dyslexics to read more or listen. And also audiobooks. Audiobooks are a great support for young adult dyslexic or even kids. But in an office document, they definitely cannot do that. So they'll pass the document to a friend and say, why don't you just read aloud? I'm busy doing something else. Sixteenth, spellings that remains disastrous and preferences for less complicated words in writing that are easier to spell. Their vocabulary doesn't increase because their spellings are miserable. They intend to use fantastic vocabulary but their retention in the brain with of these vocabulary and the spellings of these vocabulary is the biggest challenge. So you will find them writing simple sentences. The last one in all the four that is we have done 17 ways to identify reading challenges in young adults particularly poor performance in rote mechanical or clerical tasks that require minimum thinking or reasoning this is absolutely true even in children especially teenagers i have i have worked with teenagers for more than 20 years and I have seen the dyslexic teenagers, if you give them any clerical work like copying down things or making bullet points, maintaining a specific chart, putting data in that and doing a very mechanical work, they might start with enthusiasm, but they will stop within a very short while and that's because they find it absolutely monotonous. And why do they find it boring? Because their mind, their brain is always thinking of something different. So they cannot do anything which is, which is monotonous and which has to be done continuously for, a, for some time. Like completing a chart is absolutely boring for them. So they look out for creative work. They look out for problems which people are facing. So you will find them going in groups of friends 
to inquire if things are okay and if they come across that somebody is going through a family problem or a office problem or a health problem or some kind of problem, they will barge in, ask for the problem, think of some idea out of the box, share an idea and walk away. And I have seen this so many times as young school boys and girls. They'll just walk into my office and share about, you know, they heard something there and said, can I give a suggestion, give a very bright suggestion and just walk away. And it, that comes so easily to them. But reading, very difficult. It's not that they can't. But there's a technique, there's a method to be taught to them. The way we teach normal reading in classrooms doesn't work with them. And that's what I have been doing in the last 20 years. Created hundreds and hundreds of techniques to help these children. And how did I do it? I did it because every time I sat to teach a child, he gave me more challenges. He would refuse to read the way I would tell them. And that's what made me create a new technique. And like this, over the years, I've created so many techniques that I've created a program for teachers and parents. If you are somebody who's watched the video till here and you're passionate about helping these children, then you can click the link below, join for my program, join my Facebook group and get to know about many more such strategies and techniques. Here I'm mentioning how to identify, but in my program, I'm providing solutions to help these people. The, till now we were talking about the reading problems and now as every video I say they have strengths. There are many strengths with these, these boys and girls who are young adults facing challenge with dyslexia. So till now we did nine of them and in this video I will be completing three more. As I have said previously, inclination to think out of the box. I don't need to elaborate on this. Eleventh, a noticeable resilience and ability to adapt and 12th ability to get the point often almost instantly leaping over others who are stuck thinking sequentially the brain works so fast and the brain works in such a different pattern that they cannot wait to give you a solution. They don't think in a very sequential manner. If this didn't happen, then what? If this didn't happen, then what? So they don't go that step by step. And that's why in between the classes, what I have noticed is they'll just, before I can finish my problem, they'll just pop, stand in the class and say, look, I want to tell something. They're so eager to share. Not that every time they give a solution, many a times they've, they are just sharing because some idea came into their head. So initially as a young teacher, I would always, you know, get irritated by children just standing and popping in the class from their seat and trying to give some, some funny answers, get annoyed at them. But it was much later when I got deeper into studying about their behavior, I realized that there's an idea that comes to them when we talk about some topic, some chapter, something. And they immediately want to share it because they can't hold on to it, keep it in their brain. And as we tell them, you know, okay, answer the que uh, ask me questions at the end of the chapter or they can't wait till then because by then this idea has gone. They've forgotten about it already. So I make it a point to give them opportunity to stop my session, allow them to ask those questions. And if possible, I respond to the answers most of the time immediately and that what keep them curiously engaged in my classes. So if, if you are somebody who cares, who's passionately listening to this video till the end, who feels for these children or young adults and who wish to help them, you could definitely click the link below and join for the program. If nothing, you could definitely share this video to somebody to whom it could be of great use. Thank you for watching till the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe my YouTube channel. And if you are watching on the Facebook, please do write your comments. Thank you so much. See you. Bye-bye.